Hello, everyone. And welcome to the Cooking Without Looking TV show Christmas in London edition. I'm Alan Preston. Hi, everyone. And I'm Alan Happy holidays to everyone. Happy Hanukkah. Merry Christmas. We are sharing this holiday with our friends from London, England. Hello. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Alan, Hello. we really missed you last time. We're glad you're back. And Thank first you. of all, you're, you're welcome. You're a sweetheart. We didn't miss you, even though I got to do the whole show by myself. That was me. <laughs> that was me. No, just kidding. But anyway, first up, we're going to have with us Esme Halik. And Hi. She's been I'm so, hi, we're going to prepare. She's going to prepare, actually. We're going to sit back and listen. She's going to make her lamb dish. That's a big tradition for her family every Christmas. So we're so excited to have her. Oh, thank you very much, um, Annette. Hi, guys. Um, so, yeah, um, Christmas, um, we do like like turkey but we kind of got bored of turkey and we decided to do lamb um i'm a bangladeshi woman so my heritage is south asian but i'm british born so what i do is just like try to marry my britishness and my south asian culture together so what i'm going to do first is okay, i'm going to make something started, before you get yep. started sweetheart we're going to have you mm -hmm. go on in a minute we're just going to finish the introduction and then I'm going to oh, okay. reintroduce you. That's okay. No, no, we're, we're okay. excited as you are. We want to start now. <laughs> That's fine. Gonna, gonna <laughs> no be... problem. So, Alan, why don't you take over now? Your next... Well, uh... Yes, Annette, Annette yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, I hear <laughs> that you're going to prepare your perfect side dish for these holiday meals. Uh, and uh, it's uh, quick and easy. Let me see. Am I pronouncing this right? Quinoa? Is that oh, right? Quinoa, that's close. Quinoa, quinoa, okay. Yeah. With peas, parsley, and red peppers. Oh, uh, yeah. wonderful Christmas colors. Exactly, and yeah. And you know all about these, and I'm looking forward to hearing about that and maybe tasting it too. All right, Alan, thank you so much for that. I'm excited to show you guys that as well. It's definitely simple and easy, and that's what we need this time of year. And also on our third segment of our Cooking Without Looking show today, we're going to meet Ishan Ja. I hope I pronounced your name right. Ishan Ja. He is also from London and he's going to talk to us about his company. It's called VIP World, which stands for Visually Impaired People's World. And also he created the, an app. It's very interesting. It's called Travel Hands. This app is where he pairs sighted people with visually impaired people. And what they do is they help the visually impaired people navigate around London. So that should be extremely interesting. In fact, we have two of the people here that have used Travel Hands. Esme has used Travel Hands and Asim yeah. has used Travel Hands. And they're going to tell us a little bit about their experience with it. Just a reminder that everyone on our Cooking Without Looking TV show, blind or visually impaired, or well has low vision, like Annette and I. See, what I wanted to hear. Okay, well, you know what? Let's get started and take off to London. Welcome, virtual family. You're going to enjoy this Cooking Without Looking TV show today, and we're going to get started. Last but not least, we are so proud to introduce again, I apologize for the little glitch at the beginning, but Esme, she's going to make her lamb dish, which I said is a tradition in her family over the holidays. Esme, welcome. Welcome to our Cooking Without Looking show. How are you today? Oh, thank you, Annette. Hi. Yeah, um, yeah not too bad. Thank you so much for having me on here. Um, I feel honored, honestly. Before we get started, I just want to ask you if you would tell us a little bit about yourself, your blind journey, and then we'll go ahead and have you yeah. prepare your lamb dish. Yeah, I know. I got a little bit overexcited, guys, so apologies uh, for that. Um, no but yeah, so um, with me, I, my, I started my journey in 2008, um, and 
it, I was in a relationship, quite a toxic relationship, and I was a domestic violence um, victim at the time. Um, and so I had an incident where um, I was actually um, hurt um, in the head and that affected my left eye and I didn't get medical help and attention on time and that led to retinal detachment um, and because it wasn't treated um, I, I lost all the vision in my left eye um, and then yeah so I stayed in the relationship um, for another 12 years or so and then fast forward to 2015 I started getting very sick and getting headaches um, and I started getting blurred vision on my right and only eye that I had left um, and then I was diagnosed with a really rare condition known as neuromyelitis optica spectrum disease. Um, wow. It's a long name, but um, long what, name. what it, yeah, it is, it is basically, it's an autoimmune condition that can affect your optic nerves, which is what, why my vision is gone. It can affect your spinal cord. And I was actually paralyzed for two years next down because of that. And it affects your brainstem. So, yeah, um, and then my blind journey didn't really start, I think, until very recently because I was so, I didn't want to deal with it, I guess. I just thought I'd just power through life. Just, I was just so used to surviving and um, not living. Um, and so, and I met these beautiful people, um, you know, Beyond Sight Loss is a charity, a British charity, and also I Matter, um, which is where we met uh, Saeed and Ishan is also somebody who was introduced to us through one of the charities. Um, and yeah, so this is a new world that I'm, I'm, I'm maneuvering in, but it's exciting and every day just feels like it's getting brighter and bi brighter for me. So yeah, and I'm excited uh, to share how I cook as well, because that's something I held on to. Um, it was something, it was one of my coping mechanisms, I guess, um, is that I was really good in the kitchen and I, I felt like that was the only thing I could give my family. Um, and so I carried on cooking regardless. And after lots of burns and cuts, um, I'm much safer in the kitchen now. <laughs> so you're all in safe hands. Wow, we're, we're excited to hear about those tips that you learned. You learned it the hard way, obviously, through yeah. cuts and burns. But because you had that passion before you became visually impaired, you carried that over something you could show your love to your family, something you could do well. Yeah. So. We appreciate yeah. you sharing that very personal story with us. I, I can't even imagine, uh, but you seem very well put together and we're so excited to hear about your land dish. You want to prepare that for us and show us how you make yeah, it? Sure. Um, so what I have here is uh, something called a lamb saddle. So all a saddle is, is basically, is the lamb shoulder that I've deboned and then I've rolled up um, with some butcher string and it sort of looks like the inside of a beef wellington. So it's uh, long and round um, and it's wrapped, it's curled all the way up, but I've only seasoned it with salt and pepper on the inside. I've wrapped it up with a butcher string and kept it in the fridge overnight so it holds shape. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create something called a trivet in a roasting dish. So I've got a sort of a medium sized roasting dish, something that's sort of big enough for vegetables and your lamb. Um, and it's about three to four inches deep. Um, so a trivet is basically vegetables that you've got in your refrigerator or in your garden. I'm using carrots, um, which you can chop up roughly. It doesn't have to be beautiful. It's just gonna hold your lamb. It's gonna be the base. So I'm just gonna cut up these carrots. Um, now, are you, wearing any, are you wearing any protection on your hands while you cut? Do you have a tip for us as you're cutting how you can do that without cutting yourself? You do well, have so a basically. Um, what I do, I don't really rely on the distorted vision because that that was what how I was cutting myself because I was not looking at the right. Uh, object I was looking at the false one which is like the double triple vision I have so what I do I use the um the the technique where I'm holding on to the actual fruit with my knuckles facing down and so my nails and fingers are out of the way and um you know sort of take your time I think you know I tried a uh, lots of aids and I found they were more of a hindrance than a help and um, so I'm sort of relying more on the sound and the placement make sure you have a really sharp knife because the worst thing that you can have is a blunt knife. That's how you're gonna cut yourself. Um, keep your fingers out of the way and take your time. 
don't rush. Don't rush. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. Put those fingers in and make sure you um, not Yeah, them. and I would say have a plan in place so you know exactly where everything is so you're not sort of running back and forth. I'm now going to peel some shallots and shallots are sort of, bit, they're a bit like onion and you don't, I'm not going to cut them up too much. I'm cutting them in half, taking the skin off and just putting it in the dish. Um, I'm, I've, I've got about three carrots in there. Um, I try my best to make sure none of the skin remains. Um, and the other thing I was going to say about the trivet, even if you have some skin on the onions or the carrots or the garlic, it's okay. It, because you're not going to eat uh, that part. You can use it as a sauce or uh, you can make gravy out of it. Um, I usually make a gravy out of it. Um, you know, so it's sort of going to be absorbed by the lamb, the smells, the aromas. So, yeah, so don't worry too much about being a perfectionist, which okay, is something so I learned the hard more, way. It'll give it more flavor, so it'll add some moisture yeah. as well. Yeah, exactly. That's what you want. You want you want moisture and you want flavor and aromas. Um, so this is like the British side of things, like the onion, the red onion, the shallots and, and carrots. And I'll show you in a bit uh, the cultural influence that goes into this dish. Is that um, the Asian side you're talking about? Um, yeah, so the South Asian, the part that I put into the trivet will be some chili. Um, now, you, traditionally, you don't put chili in a trivet, um, but I am just because I want that sort of, you know, not overpowering, but a hint. Um, you can take the seeds out if you don't like, you know, heat um, and just have the chili itself. Uh, or you can keep the seeds in and I'm going to keep the seeds in. How about you guys? You like your food spicy or? I do, definitely. I do. I love spicy. Me too. It burns more calories too. <laughs> oh yes, that's it. Uh, it is. It's good for your metabolism. Um, just a few more shallots, and then I'm the gonna that. shallots. We say shallot. <laughs> what, what do you guys call it? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> shallots. Oh gosh, shallots. yes, we're gonna. <laughs> Oh yeah, I we call it shallots, so I do apologize if it sounds I like love alien. It. I love it. It sounds um, so sophisticated. Get, the other thing is uh, clean as you go along. So I'm gonna just get rid of the skin so that I don't get confused um, with the skin and the vegetables. Um, it's always good to clean as you go along. Um, now the garlic, I've got a whole uh, bulb of garlic here. All I'm gonna do is just rinse it. Um, with the skin on and then put it on its side and I'm going to slice through halfway. I'm not going to bother peeling it or crushing it. So what you've got now is two halves of a whole bulb of, is it a bulb what you call it? I think so. Um, and then it just goes in um, with the skin. Don't worry about the skin. Like I, I said, it. it's, I know you can, but you don't need to, because again, like I said, the trivet's gonna become a gravy, um, or it's, it's more for the flavor and the aromas. I have myself some red chili now, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the stem off. Well, I'll try to. Okay, it doesn't wanna come off. I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna slice it in half. I'm going to leave, this, leave the seeds in, but if you want, you can take the seeds out. The other thing I'm adding to the trivet is Celery sticks. Is that what you guys call it over there? Um, I call it uh, celery sticks. Yeah, yeah. Just celery. That's that's good. The same thing. Yeah, basically there's sticks yeah. and celery so, and chopping up. Yeah. So again, I'm going to chop them roughly. Um, I'm, I'm holding them as a bunch. I've got about three or four pieces of celery and I'm holding them with my hand together and just chopping them all at once. And that's gonna go into the dish. I'm pouring that in the dish right now. Um, oh, don't put the, the root of the celery because they're a little bit tough. It's, I mean, I don't know if there's anything wrong with doing that, but I don't like it. That's just my personal choice. Now, in that, I'm gonna add some chopped parsley. Um, you can use flat leaf parsley, you can use curly leaf, totally up to you. Um, you can also use uh, coriander instead, which is 
I think you guys call it, um, what do you call it? You call mm -hmm. coriander something else. Um, cilantro. <laughs> That's it. Oh, yes, I use cilantro in a lot of things. Yeah. I think that you can use cilantro here, but I'm using pasta today. And then I'm going to get myself some thyme um, twigs um, whole. I'm going to put them in there as well. And drizzle of olive oil. So I've got the bottle of olive oil in my hand. I'm going to put my thumb over the bottle opening and then drizzle it over like that. Because if I don't put my thumb on, over it, I'm going to get too much in there. So you're sort of drizzling all over and then you go and go ahead and you season. I'm just using rock salt and pepper. Um, you can add, you know, if you want to add a stock cube in there or all purpose, you're more than welcome to, but I'm going to keep this one simple because we want the lamb to be the show, star of the show. Um, I'm adding the, grinding the pepper in now. So that's your seasoning. And just give it a little mix, mix all the vegetables up. So you're sort of making sure the flavor goes in. And then I'm gonna move on to the lamb. So for the dry rub, I'm gonna do a dry rub before I do the wet rub. Let's move the chopping board out of the way. Now, do you make your own dry rub or is this something you purchase that yes. makes it good one? Uh, no, I make, my, I make my own. So what I'm gonna do, I've got myself a little bowl, a ramekin, and in there, um, very simple, I'm going to add some, Right, okay, I'm trying to remember. Renee, can you remind me? I forgot, I don't know why I've gone blank. Okay, that's it, yeah. So I've got ground coriander. Now, ground coriander, we call it uh, dania, which literally translates into coriander. Um, I actually make the spice myself. I buy the seeds, the whole uh, coriander seeds, toast them and blitz them. Um, and make them into a powder. So I've got about one teaspoon of that in there. And then I'm going to add something called Indian Five Spice. Um, and Indian Five Spice is again, a mix of sort of whole spices, including nigella seeds, um, fennel seeds, um, white mustard seeds. Um, yeah, so, and what's the other two? I think the uh, cloves <laughs> and whole black, whole black pepper. Um, nice. So again, yeah, again, we're gonna add some salt and pepper for seasoning, you know, season to taste, of course. It's all about uh, the seasoning, right? I mean, you gotta have good seasoning to, for food to taste. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And it's, it's chicken no, flour, I don't know. chicken flour yeah. seasoning, but the same thing with the lamb. I don't know about you guys, but you know, pepper, I love pepper on my love pepper. Mm -hmm. I, I love pepper black pepper um you can use some white pepper as well if you fancy an extra kick but let's keep it simple and then the kick on this rub is going to be my chili flakes so i'm going to take my chili flakes let's open it and then again a teaspoon of that uh chili flakes where i'm going to have trouble not going to fit the spoon's not going to fit so i'm going to try and pour it onto the spoon are the flakes better than the powder um i i think it gives like the the flakes because they're dry chilies it gives a very intense and deep flavor and um but it's not overpowering if that makes sense, that makes sense. um so yeah that's why i prefer so now i've got the dry rub i'm going to go generously over the saddle that I've wrapped um, and rub it in there. You know, don't be stingy. You want to use up all of that rubbing over that. So do you ever have your children it. cook with you? Sorry? Me, do you ever have your children cook with you? 
Oh like yes, food. yeah, absolutely. They love, and you know, like stuff like this, rubbing the yes. lamb and all of that. This is like what the kids you could get the kids involved in, you know. Um, and another thing is a lot of us who have neurological problems. This is really good. Like if you have issues with your fingertips, motor skills, this is excellent for that. Um, so now I am going to seal my saddle. I'm going to get myself a griddle pan, right? You can use a, a iron cast if you want, or just a normal nonstick frying pan if you have one. Um, and put it on the highest possible heat. And we're going to seal the meat. While we're getting the pan ready, um, I'm going to make the wet rub. Now, the wet rub is literally three, uh, four ingredients. So I've got mustard. The British love mustard, right? Um, so that's, again, the British side of me. I'm going to use a one teaspoon of yellow mustard uh, paste. Um, and then I'm going to use one teaspoon of extra virgin olive oil. It's funny you should say that about the mustard because Americans love ketchup. <laughs> you love yeah. mustard. We're always opposite with you guys. Yeah, oh God, I've got four children. Two of them love ketchup and two of them hate it. So yeah, <laughs> dinner times are a little bit fussy. Um, around mine and then I'm going to use something called liquid seasoning I'm using the Maggie uh, brand I don't know if it's available in the U.S. Um, or around the world but it's very um, but you can use any vegetable uh, or vegan uh, liquid seasoning um, but try and get the vegetarian one so the vegan or the vegetarian one not the meat uh, liquid seasoning this is really good um, and again I'm going to go in with about one tablespoon of this Um, so when I'm measuring with tablespoons, I like to keep my fingertip on top of my measuring spoon so that I can feel it when it gets full. Um, I don't know how, which technique you guys use, but I keep my fingertip on top of my measuring spoon so that I can feel it filling up. Um, obviously, I make sure my hands are very clean um, so that, you know. Right. That's a great so tip. We do the same thing yeah. in the glass. Yeah, um, and then all, I, all that's left now is, um, I, I know I said half of a lemon, but I'm going to go a little bit less than half because the piece of lamb that I've got now is a little bit smaller than um, what I usually use. So lemon, a uh, quarter of a lemon juiced. You can use a uh, bottle lemon juice if you want. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be fresh lemon. Um, so that's my wet marinade ready. So now the pan's nice and hot. Let's get the meat on. Oh, I'm using some tongs. They're quite big and I'm using one of my hands to lift the meat and carry it onto the pan. And I don't know if you guys can hear that sizzle. Hear the sizzle, yeah. I love that yeah? sound. I love that yeah. So you want you want the um, pan to be sizzling hot. You don't need to put any oil or any grease on the pan, um, because the lamb is has got a nice bit of fat on the outside, so that's going to be suffice, you know. You're kind of and then you just may do you use a skillet, an iron skillet, or do you use stainless steel? The iron, so the one I'm using is called a non-stick griddle pan. Um, so it's a bit, yeah, so it's a bit like, you know how you make your grilled sandwiches? It's one of those. Mm -hmm. um, you can use a skillet, you can use a non-stick frying pan, as long as it's something non-stick, um, it's fine. Okay. So we're just going to seal that all around. And then turn it. I don't hear the sizzle anymore. I heard it the first time. <laughs> oh weird. no, we've gone sizzle there. Is it still sizzling? Sizzle. Yeah, it's sizzling still. I think. No, uh, I don't hear it. Maybe I don't know. The first time I heard it, but I take your word for yeah. it. It's, it's got a sizzle. At least four, <laughs> it's got a sizzle at least four times. <laughs> so turn it around. <laughs> 
There we go. And then I wonder if you could do that on a grill. Um, you you could. I think you could. Um, you probably be. You could possibly do it in your grill. Yeah, I don't see why not. Okay. I just like the sound of the sizzle. Me as too. The name it's so satisfying. So that's sealed. Now you get your wet, uh, wet rub. Give that a good mix, and you get. Let's turn that off. Um, while it's still in the pan, I'm going to get myself a pastry brush and rub that wet rub on. So again, I've got all my equipment out on a plate so I know exactly where everything is. You don't want to be looking for stuff when you're cooking, especially Christmas cooking. That can be quite stressful, can't it? Because you're doing exactly. so many elements, you know? I love um, you. You know exactly how we're feeling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So... Hey. Let's make sure the wet rub is going everywhere. So you can make all these rubs ahead of time and just have them, you know, ready in your fridge. And then you just do yeah. it really fast. Yeah. So sometimes um, you can even, what I've done, seal it and then you can actually freeze it. You can wrap it well and you can freeze it ahead of time. Um, and then it's ready to go. Um, wow. So remember, remember the trivette. Now the meat is going to go on top of the trivette, I like so. And you can add some vegetables at this point if you want to have some broccoli um, as a side. Um, just put that in the corner. Um, I'm going to have some asparagus as well. Um, and that, and then, then we're going to put it, put it in the oven. It's going to go into uh, 180 degrees uh, Celsius. Um, I'm not sure what that translates into as Fahrenheit. Um, oh, God, I nearly forgot. I'm gonna cover it with some tin foil. Don't worry about the conversion because everybody has, most people have their cell phone and we could just ask, you know, yeah. what money in Celsius is in Fahrenheit. So. That's okay. Yeah. I think it's about 30 or 40 degrees more going to Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. So if you if you like your meat medium rare, then I would only leave it in there for 20 minutes on 180 and then let it rest for about 15 minutes. Um, lamb needs resting. That's something we've got to remember. Um, lamb doesn't do well. As if you try to cut it as soon as you come out of the oven, um, you're mm -hmm. going to be having a war. Um, okay. So yeah, yeah. So that's a really important part. So I'm uh, my children like their meat well cooked and I like it medium rare. Um, but yeah, so that's something that happens in our house. A lot. So you want to make sure um, that the lamb, the yeah, lamb has to rest after it cooks. How about the cook? Does the cook rest after she cooks? <laughs> <laughs> yes, with a lovely glass of red. Um, oh, yes, then, cooking with wine. Esme, I have a yeah, quick question yeah. for you. Approximately how much did that piece weigh? Okay, so... I, uh, it would weigh about, uh, the one I've just cooked now is yes. just under uh, one, uh, one and a half kilograms. I think it was about, uh, in grams, 1,200 grams, something like that. Um, the yeah. other one uh, weighed nearly 2,000 grams, uh, which is two kgs, just, just about 1,980 kilograms. That was the would weight. Would it be That's so much time in the oven per kilogram? Um, so I think it Not turns perfect. out as per kg, it's about medium rare is 10 minutes. Um, um, well done is 20 to 30 minutes per kg. Do you happen to know if there's an internal meat temperature on that? That those of us who use these nice digital meat through. Ah, uh, yes. So you see, I didn't learn to cook like that, unfortunately. Uh. Um, uh, because when I was cooking, when I was sighted, it was, you know like how you say eyeballing? So yeah. the way I cook now is, it's funny that you ask the question because I cook with my sense of smell more than anything. And the smell of the meat changes through every process. When it's medium rare, it smells a certain way. When it's well cooked, it's a certain, certain way. But um, that's definitely something, I think even if you Google it, medium rare, what's the temperature on the inside? It should be pretty easy to find that out. Um, yeah. Standard for any kind of lamb, essentially, I was. Expecting. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, the other thing I was just going to add, um, the lamb shoulder that I bought, that I deboned, I'm not getting rid of anything. I've used the bones and ex the extra trimmings and I'm making a curry sauce. So I've got like onions, ginger, garlic, some curry powder, boiling away with that bone. And that's going to make a beautiful sauce uh, for your lamb. Um, and so this has had um, 40 minutes in the oven, um, the one I made earlier. And it's been resting for about 20 minutes and, and it's ready. So, wow. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay. So all the, the trivet, I don't know if you guys can, can see. I'll try and hold it up to the I camera. Can see it. You're you're angling it perfect. We can see everything. Yeah. yeah so and can you no. can you see that, that little sauce gathering at the bottom there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I you you're more than welcome to make a gravy out of that. You can take mm. roast the tin, but I'm not doing that right now because I'm lazy. Um <laughs> So that's the meat. So let's try. That looks wonderful, and you made it seem so easy, and you're extremely organized. You know, I think your family is going to go crazy over this over Christmas. They're going to just want to eat it. It's delicious. You better make a big one. You better make a big one for sure. But what you well, one thing I would suggest is if you want to do a saddle, get it ordered in advance before Christmas because. As you know, butchers are going to be crazy busy. So try yeah. and get your order in. You can get it ordered and they'll do the saddling for you. You don't have to be extra like me and do the saddling yourself. Um, okay. <laughs> but yeah. That's a good um, tip. <laughs> no That's problem. A good tip. Um, so That's I'm going to cut into the meat. I wish we could taste it. it. Oh, I would love to taste it. I wish, you, I wish you could. I wish you could. I wish you could. And I, I'll show you. I'm, I'm serving this with my homemade Yorkshire puddings. I don't mm -hmm. know if you can see these. Oh, so this is very oh, British. I don't know if yes. you guys have Yorkshire puddings there. Um, so I'm serving it with that. I'm also serving it with another South Asian uh, influence here. Now, everybody likes a good salsa. This is mango and pepper with coriander, cilantro. And it's mm. like a salsa that I'm gonna have on the side. And again, that's oh. gonna remind me of like my culture and my background and it gives that. You can sprinkle a little bit of chili flakes in there, which I'm gonna do as well. Um, and it's, yes, it's delicious. I have, a, I have a very important question. Go ahead. Um, can you tell me your address so I can go to your house and eat that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I live by the canal. Um, <laughs> so Ishan, you're more than welcome anytime I need help. So let's go right, into the I'm, meat. I'm starting, I'm starting to go run soon, yeah. <laughs> that's right you guys live close to each other you're you're yeah. lucky we're not going to be able to taste it but we can sure imagine how good it is and i know your family's going to love it as well and yeah. uh, we're, we're excited and appreciate that you uh, did this recipe for us today thank you you want to plate it and show us after yes the plate? that's what okay. i'm gonna do okay that's what i'm gonna do now i'm gonna plate it for you wow mm. Um, another tip is try and get rid of as much string as you can before you cut into it. Oh, yeah. um, again, <laughs> I can't be bothered right now. Um, where are my roasties? Where are my roasties? Roast potato. There's no Christmas dinner with no, without roast potato. Mm. <laughs> oh, it's magic. Like <laughs> and there you have your perfect Christmas dinner. Obviously, um, you're going to add gravy. And you're going to use the lamb sauce. Um, I usually cut up the lamb and we have two gravies. We have the normal, usual gravy, the lamb or the chicken or the vegetable gravy, and then the Indian version uh, gravy. So you can pick and choose. And it's with the salsa as well. So there we have it. That looks Perfect beautiful. Christmas dinner. That looks Thank beautiful. And it looks complete. And Thank you very it's amazing. much. All the spices you used, I'm sure it tastes so delicious. So we yeah. want to just thank you. Thank you so <laughs> much for doing this. You're so welcome. That. I'm going to have a little taste. You're going to taste it right now? You're going to describe mm. it for us? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. That's definitely. Mm. Will you come back you know and us maybe <laughs> join us when we do the traveling hands? I want to find out your experience. We'll come back again, okay? 
No problem, 100%. All right, thanks again, honey. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, now, Annette, it's your turn. Tell us about your quick and easy keynote. Well, Alan, it's my turn, and I'm ready for Christmas. Got the red dishcloth, the hat, the red shirt. We have a pretty good looking green apron. So if you want an apron, ask Renee. She'll have to order you one. <laughs> but oh. okay, I can't compete with Esme's lamb dish. I'm predominantly vegan, but after seeing that, I swear I would convert. Um, I just, lamb is so distinct. I mean, you either love it or you hate it. And it's just such an awesome flavor. And so many people love it. But this dish I'm making, actually, I was thinking about this last night. My dish is called quinoa with peas and, and um, peppers, red peppers. Duh. Mm -hmm. You could use so many different kinds of vegetables, but I chose these two because they're hearty and they complement each other. And in fact, this dish would go with Esme's lamb dish as a side dish. So let's get started. This is quick and easy, guys. Those are also it. some wonderful Christmas colors, too. Yeah, don't you love it? Now we need some Hanukkah colors though. What are we gonna use for blue? Alan's shirt, that's about it. My shirt, that's it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> quinoa, and the reason I chose quinoa is because it's high in protein and it's high in fiber. And if you're predominantly vegan, you just can have this dish by itself or you can add lamb, you can add chicken, you can add you know, pieces of steak, whatever you want to do. So, this is a quinoa now. I made this in the difference last night. And you can do that because this dish you can oh, see it. We're, we're losing your sound, Annette. Oh no. Can you hear me now? Uh, no, a little bit. Don't they, it's in that can you hear me? Better. Yes, much better now. I think I have to yell. I'm sorry. My phone is a little bit away from me. So you it um, got too far away from you. Darn too far. far away. Them down and they move. <laughs> Uh, you're in and out right now. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, anyway, this is the quinoa. I made this quinoa. I'm going to a little bit, so I apologize. Quinoa I made last night. And if you can make it ahead of time, this dish you could either eat at room temperature or you could slightly heat it up. Or room temperature, you could add chicken or lamb to it. And it's, it, it's very versatile. That's what I love about it. So what I did is I took one cup of quinoa my pan last night and two cups of water and I boiled it for about uh, I would say probably eight eight minutes or so and it gets real fluffy you'll know when it's you know boiling when it's when it's done because it'll be more tender you need to taste it a couple of times and make sure that the seed is tender so right now I'm pouring in the quinoa so one cup of quinoa that ends up being four servings, but I don't believe that. Four servings. I could actually eat half of this myself. But for does it expand days, when you cook it and it gets it moisture with it? It does expand a little bit. So one cup of dry quinoa is supposed to be four servings. So it does expand. But as I was saying to you, this would even be good for two people, two very hungry people. <laughs> <laughs> I fall off, so let me fix that. It reminds me when I was a little girl, I was in the Mickey Mouse Club, and I have a video of me hitting my hat. My hat kept falling, and this is doing the same. Okay, so you got your peas in the bowl. Next are the peas. I also steamed them last night. What's interesting about the peas, when you're frozen and you put them in the steamer, they almost sound like little pebbles. And you can always tell when they're done because they don't sound like pebbles anymore. So as soon as they don't hit the pan and sound like pebbles hitting the pan, you know they're done. So you wanna shut off your burner right away and immediately rinse your peas with cool water and that will stop the cooking process. So I have- How long does that take to cook them? To cook the peas, well, let's say they were frozen, I'd say 10 minutes from soup to nuts from the time- 10 minutes, okay. Till they're ready. I like them a little tender. Nobody wants mushy peas, you know? That's yeah. kind of gross. Okay, so here are my peas, my whole bag. I'm pouring in the whole bag of peas after they've been steamed. Of course, as I said, you can make this ahead of time. 
right, now comes the fun part. Uh, the red peppers. I got two red peppers here. I'm not sure if I want to use one or two yet. Let me see. But I have this special glove that I bought. This is for cutting so that you don't cut yourself. I forget. They're, I think they're called Ugg gloves or something like that. I saw another chef who was cited that actually wore these. So you can imagine, you know, he cited things. Does it have some kind of protection that the knife won't go through? What are they made yeah, of? It's a special material. Let me see if I can see with my magnifier here. It's called, let's see here. I don't know. I, I apologize. I'm not sure. I don't worry about it for right now, but that's kind of interesting. And you, yeah. you oven mitt too? Or is that? It for cutting? Can you use it also as an oven mitt or is it just for cutting? Um, well, you know, it's not for taking things out of the oven, if that's what you mean. Oh, uh, okay, yes. So yeah. It's not bad, but it will guard you against the knife. Okay, <laughs> that's good enough. <laughs> it's good to go, right? Yeah, I have yes. another mitt for the oven. I have this huge mitt for the oven. Ah, uh, yes, I've got a couple of those myself, yes. Yeah, those are nice. But, here's your but having a glove that doesn't allow you to get extra protein in your vegetable is a good thing. That's true. Now, this pepper, I'm just going to cut around the whole thing. And the gloves on my left hand. So if I accidentally, see, I've tried like this made up so I put my fingers in as well, but I like it this way better. I'm not as so talented with, <laughs> with holding my fingers in, you know, it feels awkward to me. Maybe with practice, but this is easier. And throw away that part. Now I have the big pieces. There's like three or four big pieces of the, the uh, pepper because I just cut around it. So now I'm going to cut the long way. And you can cut this any way you want. I'm going to cut in the long way into slices, quivers, I should say. And then we'll kind of make them a little bit more like bite-sized pieces, okay? Peppers are great. When I was a little girl, we used to, my mom used to suck them like a hamburger. Dunk them uh, I'm a little bit curious. I'm, I'm very familiar with red peppers, green peppers, and yellow peppers. And I think they all have a little different taste to them too, don't they? Well, let's see. <laughs> I don't have all of them to compare. But I think they all pretty much taste the same to me, but the difference with the red and the reason I like to use them are two. Once it's, once, one is it's Christmas. And it's colorful. Two, yeah, number two, it's the highest in vitamin C, the red ones. Oh, now that's an interesting fact. I yeah. didn't know. And they're more expensive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Skip, Skip would rather have you get a different color, I bet. <laughs> yeah, well, Skip will eat any color. He's not picky. He's it's anything that's different. He eats leftovers, too. <laughs> Yeah, I bet he does. Okay, so now it's all cut up. I have this trusty little tool. <laughs> it's a stainless steel. It's about the size of a big deck of cards, a big deck of cards. And I just okay. scoop up my peppers with it and I dump them in to the bowl. Now, I'm not going to use the second red pepper because if I want to use more quinoa, I probably would. So I'm going to save this. For another day, I'm gonna take the trusty glove off. Oh, yeah. you could just wash that off, right? Well, you can put them in the washing machine just like a pot holder, yeah. but it's, it's not really dirty, it's kind of a little bit you know damp from the pepper, but it'll be okay. We'll okay. keep it, we'll wash it next okay. time. Okay, so you've got your peas, your quinoa, your pepper is the bowl. Now, I have a confession to make, please forgive me. I went to get some parsley for this salad because I prefer parsley, but I didn't bring my trusty magnifier with me to the store. And I couldn't tell the difference if it was parsley or cilantro. Okay, you know what the answer is. <laughs> so, yes, I do. I've done the same thing the other way around. <laughs> you have? Okay, I don't feel so bad. But you know what's even worse about this story is I asked somebody else. I said, can you help me? 
do you mind? I have a visual impairment. Can you help me find some parsley? Well, they picked out the cilantro too. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what you call blind leading the blind, but he was sighted, but I think he had that 50s plus thing going on, you know? <laughs> they both okay. taste pretty good as a spice though. Yeah, oh yeah. So I have cilantro, but that just goes to show you, you can use cilantro, you can use parsley, you can use well, what other herbs, what other herb, green herbs like this, I can't think, but you out there can think of it, but either parsley or cilantro is good. So what I do is I put it on the cutting board and I got two steak knives. And Alan, you made me think of this. I call it crisscross parsley sauce or crisscross. I take two knives and I simply crisscross them. And that's the way I cut my cilantro up. I almost said parsley, but that's how I cut my cilantro into big pieces, little big pieces. I don't know that works know. very well. I like to use scissors. That works too. I've done that. I have no patience to really chop it. I'm not good at chopping. I'm really not. I'm just doing it. Yeah. I think it was Celia taught me to use scissors to cut that stuff up. Oh, yeah. That's a good thing. I miss yeah. Celia. I, miss Celia. I sure do too. Wow. She also taught me what a ramekin is. Never knew before that. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I say she also told me what a ramekin was, and I never knew before that. <laughs> oh, Alan, I love you. You are just so green when it comes to cooking. You are so cute. Separating two eggs, does that mean you move one to either side of the counter? <laughs> you're you're poor. Your next girlfriend, I don't know. She needs to be careful with you. Okay, so it's all shipped up. Like it's all shipped up. We're going to do. I'm going to use my trusty little scooper again. And I'm going to throw that into the salad. I'm using a wooden cooking board. I love the wooden cooking board the best. Okay, now we're going to use lemon. Now what I do is I roll my lemon a little bit on the counter just to kind of release the seeds, the skin, the pulp from the skin. Juice. It releases the skin, and doesn't it help to squishy up the inside so the juice comes out easier? Well, duh, that's what I meant. <laughs> oh, okay. Same thing. Yeah, it makes right. it more pliable. So I'm going to cut I it. I bet it does that, too. Yeah. So you can use half a lemon or a whole. I'm going to use a whole lemon. A lot of herbs and got a lot of stuff going on. Um, I put a bowl with a little like a screen, I don't know what you call this thing, but I'll grab the seeds, like a, a strainer. I don't want to get any seeds in there. And then I have a trusty lemon squeezer. I bought this at that bath. You just put the lemon in there and you just squeeze it so you don't squeeze it with your hands. It makes it a lot easier to get more juice out of it. And um, I'm just turning it around and get both sides. I wash this lemon, it is organic. Try the other one. This one's very juicy. Wow. What the heck? Woo. I love it. A little Let me extra it rolling it around? What's that? A little extra juice from rolling it around? I think so. Yeah. And it's, I put it out a couple days ago. So it's been on the counter too. I didn't leave it in the fridge. That's something you can do if you want it to be juicier. Just don't keep them in the fridge if you're going to be using them. Okay, they look pretty too on your counter. Put them in a little bowl. Okay, so let's put the juice. Uh oh, I think there's a little pit in there. Let me get that out. I don't know how that's going to find me, but. Now, I'm going to pour the lemon juice. All over. Mm. I need my mouth pucker up. My smell the lemon juice. Should I love the smell too. Smell it too. Smell it. Yes. All right. Last but not least, are one, two, three, four more ingredients, but so simple. We're going to add a tablespoon of olive oil, called E P O O. Or you could add more if you like. I'm on a low 
oil diet, it's called SOS, low on sugar, oil, and salt. So I only put a tablespoon. And I actually helped me to lose like 10 pounds. My hands falling off again. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> oil, if you are going to have um, oil, make sure it's not saturated fat. You could have a little olive oil, some nuts, some seeds, some almond butters, a little peanut butter. And make sure you don't eat a lot of it if you're trying to lose weight. But don't eat any saturated fat because that will stay with you forever. Okay, now cumin. Now you can leave this out or you can put it in, but I like it to be like a background note, not the first thing you taste. You take a bite and go, oh, that's got cumin in it. That might be a turnoff, but you just want, to some people, you just want to put a little bit. So it's like an eighth of a teaspoon. Tablespoon of olive oil, eighth of a teaspoon of cumin. And last but it's not easier to add more than to take some out. Exactly. Now that, that's a definite yes on that. This is salt and pepper, about two teaspoons of salt and a teaspoon of pepper. And this was all grounded up before the show. I, I agree with Esme how you should have everything called mise en place. Have all your supplies and all the things you need set out first so you're not squirming around the kitchen trying to find it. So you're and being familiar with your kitchen is very helpful too. I love it. Yeah, please. I, when I go to my sister's house, I, I feel like I'm not very helpful because the whole time mm -hmm. I'm just like standing, moving back and forth like a, a fan oscillating. I don't mm -hmm. know where to go, what to do. But you always want the salt and pepper to taste. It's a personal thing. And like Alan said, you could always add more. You don't want to overdo it. Now, when I mix this up, I use a huge bowl because I'm messy and it's better if you're just going to to have a lot of room in your bowl. I agree good. with you completely. And I like to work over the top of a tray too. Very good. Yeah. Yeah, this is the cutting board. It's kind of like a tray. So I'm going to put it in another dish. I love using white dishes or bowls because it's such a contrast when you're visually impaired. It's a good way to display food and you can watch cooking How shows. Interesting. They do that as well. They use a lot of white plates in cooking shows. Now, cooking I have shows. both uh, white or light colored bowls and plates, and I also have a few dark colored ones because sometimes there are things that I'm trying to mix or put together where it's easier to see it on a dark colored background. Mm -hmm. I keep them in different places too. That makes sense, I like that. So I'm gonna hold this up. I don't have any video anymore, I don't know what happened, but this is the dish. You can see the red and the green, and it just makes a nice presentation at your table. Like I said, this is a great side dish or you can add meat to it. You can add your chicken. Let's say you're working all day. You make this the night before. You stop at the grocery store. You pick up a chicken that's already cooked. You come home. You chop up your chicken. You put it in your quinoa dish and you have a meal. And you're done. And everybody will enjoy it. It's hearty. And let me taste it. See if it, it is it, delicious. But let's see if this one turned out. Yeah. And if you, if you can come closer to your camera, maybe. I would love to have a look. Closer look. Mm, that's so good. That looks absolutely excellent. I bet that would go absolutely excellent with lamb. Well, like I said, it would go. Uh, it would be a great side dish with lamb. How about if you and I get together at the airport and head over to England tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to do it, but uh, I know, Alan. I wish you lived out here. I'm in Fort Lauderdale. You're in West Palm Beach. But if you were closer, I'd definitely give you some because. I know how bachelors suffer. They need to have some home cooking, so. Oh, thank you. Yes, we do. <laughs> thank you so much for joining me. And I hope you would try this quinoa dish with peas and red peppers. Oh, try different things. Thank, thank you, so you much. very much, Annette. Thank you. You're both welcome to England at mine anytime, guys. <laughs> What's that, Esme? I said, you're welcome to come over anytime. Soon would be better. I'm coming to England. I've been to Paris. I've been to Italy, and I haven't been to. I was in England for one day. That's right. I told you that the other day. But I want to come. I'll definitely come visit you. All right. So I don't know if y'all can see me if I'm centered correctly because we're going to move on to our next guest. 
Last but not least. Perfect. Can you see me okay, guys? All Perfect. right, I guess that means yes. Well, now we're going to move on to our next segment, and we're going to meet Isham Ja. Okay, Isham Ja is the but is the president, the founder. He's everything. He's everything about this company, VIP. It's called Visually Impaired People World. He also is the, the developer of the Travel Hands app. That is amazing. This app is it pairs the visually impaired with people that are sighted. These people are volunteers. They're verified and they're registered. And people, visually impaired people, can hook up with these volunteers and they will navigate for them through London and help them. So we're so excited to have um, Ishan Ja with us today. Welcome, sir. How are you today? Doing well, thank you. Thank you, thank you for having me over. Oh, it's our pleasure. Thank you so much for being here. I want to definitely, I've been thinking about this last night. I want to know how and why you developed this app called Traveling Hands, and then we'll talk about your company, overall company, the website and the services that you offer. But first let's talk about the uh, Traveling Hands. It's just strictly in London. Can you go ahead and share that with us, please? Yes, so, uh, well, the whole, the whole story, um, it all began when I was researching for my uh, master's mm -hmm. thesis. And my, the topic I chose was uh, how to increase employability for the visually impaired people. Um, and why I chose this was because of my own personal um, experience with the eye uh, disease called keratoconus. So the cornea, uh, which is which is curve, is mine is becoming conical, and um, that makes uh, things very shadowy. So. Um, I wear RGP contact lenses, hard lenses, and that helps me to, you know, uh, have a stable eye, eyesight. So I, I could feel the pain that a visually impaired person must have, must be going all around, you know, all, all, all around the day. And that experience, uh, when I was working in the office and I had this problem, I was, I was very, very um, scared that I lose my job. Uh, what will I do? And that emotion made me choose this topic, how to increase employability for the visually impaired people. And I started researching on this. I joined a charity called Blind Aid in London, where I was teaching uh, others how to use uh, smartphones and computers and, and learning myself about accessibility, about how our VIP live, how they operate. And during that journey, um, we were bar hopping with, I was bar hopping with some of my VIP friends. We're bar hopping. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> yeah, it was. I'm about, glad you're not just studious. You you have some fun too. Well, what's life without fun, right? So, um, and fun is one of the you know values of the com company as well. So uh, while doing that, uh, some uh, a VIP just said, you know, you have behaved like a good Uber human being. So good job, thank you. And that clicked and I, and I thought, yeah, why not? Like if, if I can have a nice time helping people, VIP to go from point A to point B, that sounds like a feasible idea to be shared with others. So um, we started researching on the topic. I, I come, you know, spent two months speaking to uh, charity owners, caregivers, um, um, taxi drivers, our transport of London staff uh, and collected all that information and then, you know, design travel hands according to that. Um, well, volunteering is something which is very, uh, people love to uh, participate. And we are trying to like give some incentives to our volunteers as well. Um, the distance they walk with the VIP time they spend gets converted to points and points are redeemed as rewards uh, from our affiliate corporate partners. So uh, we've been providing Amazon coupons, um, you know, free gifts, but I think um, we want to accelerate that and organize it in such a way that a sighted person also benefits, you know, physically being active, uh, having that, you know, emotional, um, like just today I was reading an article, it said 53% of Londoners uh, feel lonely 
uh, London is the loneliest city in Europe, and that's what it says. Um, but not so you're, giving them, you're giving them a good quality, a better quality of life, a little bit more independence. Yes, not just for the you know, not just for the for the VIP community. Uh, what I mean is like it, it also helps sighted people a lot because it makes people uh, physically active and emotionally connected to this uh, society they live in. So Travel Hands, well, it's about, it's, it's, it's a beautiful story that, you know, uh, a sighted person is creating with a VIP uh, in their lives. And um, yeah, I think spreading um, empathy and love and friendship. That's what we are about. Wow, that is such an amazing, beautiful concept. I mean, how, how long did it take you to put this together? It just sounds so intense. You have to get several layers. You have to get research, a lot of research to get this going. Yes, um, well, it's been, you know, it's been three years since that bar hopping day. <laughs> um, <laughs> about three years. It was like three years, um, Christmas time, I remember, uh, three years ago. And um, yeah, it, it, it took about, so the research is ongoing. It, it's not, not gonna stop, right? The idea is how do we scale to other cities? How do we scale to other countries? And how do we make this um, sustainable? How do we make it uh, convenient and, and, and continuous? So the research is ongoing, I would say. Yes, uh, let's get it around. This concept should be all around the world, this this availability of this app. How come it's not all around? Because every app that we get, like let's say we get Facebook, they get Facebook in Italy. How come they can't get this one? Well, you know, uh, we are a startup at the moment um, and, and we're trying to like um, get the investments in here um, and then go to, to the next level. Um, at the moment, uh, our app is going to be launching by end of this month. Uh, until now, we were operating through a call center because we wanted to test if, if this uh, hypothesis works, if people really need it. And um, Esme and Said have used, um, uh, who are here, who have used Travel Hands. They'll, they'll talk more in detail how it, how it benefits them. Uh, but but then again, like you know, we, we are improving. We're going to improve a lot. I promise. It's just that um, it is a big task, right? It's 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 it, it requires a lot of human involvement. That's why it will take a little bit more time than Facebook, you know, which is just an app being downloaded everywhere. Okay. I would love to get that started here in the United States, but I do have a quick question. Over here, everybody wants to sue everybody. What do you do about <laughs> insurance or do you need it or do you uh, or do you need it uh, do, uh, the liability ins insurance you mean yes uh, I, I I don't know exactly mm -hmm. how much you get into it do you need it and uh, has, has that issue come up well you know um, as a company we we um, we do have all the insurances the general liability insurance is covered however when our uh, users sign up we, we, we make them um, um, the consent form. We have mentioned that like, you know, any, any physical harm being done. Um, we, I mean, safety is our biggest priority. You know, we, we okay. do- now uh, That's what I was looking to hear. Enhance, yeah, we do enhance DBS. It's a mechanism by the UK government to test the person's background. So we, we pay for that. We ensure that, you know, the people, the volunteers are, uh, come from a clean background. We train them until they pass our quiz. They are not qualified to become a, a travel hands volunteer. Um, it takes a bit of time, and then we push. Uh, our team works around the clock to make that happen. Only then a person is ready. Um, other than that, um, insurances. Um, well, we we uh, all the same. Like considering all the safety measures. Uh, we we uh, ensure that the call center team observes the movement of the people. So the GPS location is tracked when they are together in the journey. And if there's a problem, we, we can know how to resolve it. Are, are there fees or charges for the people that use this? Yes. So our VIP uh, pay three pounds for up to three hours of travel hands and five pounds for a 24 hour uh, assistance. 
um, and we have a monthly subscription as well, um, uh, 15 pounds a month. So at the moment, uh, that's how we started, but we're evolving and we're trying to add in, you know, um, different ways that, that can assist uh, VIP in, in a smoother travel experience. Wow. And getting the people together is wonderful. I'm sorry, Annette, I didn't mean to walk on your glass. No, that's okay. No, it's fascinating to me. It's just amazing. I mean, how do you how do you get your volunteers? And how do they know about it to even want to volunteer? Well, we have been we have been uh, focusing on personas, first of all. Uh, students who would who would like to volunteer because like they would like to increase uh, credibility on the CV as well as you know make friends um, um, full-time workers who'd like to have uh, you know everybody's on on zoom or teams all the time uh, working 12 hours and not being able to walk even 10,000 steps uh, the bare minimum so uh, we are encouraging our full-time workers to take half an hour break one hour break and help a VIP go from you know the doorstep to the uh, tube station and come back. Um, we have senior citizens, we are pitching to them, 60 to 72 years old, uh, who would love to participate, make new friends, you know, help out people, spend some time um, interacting with the community. Um, then we are, um, um, you know, we're marketing through social media, through partnerships, through corporate partnerships, through voluntary organizations, and, and yeah, um, trying to get government involved as much as possible this this is amazing and genius of you what is your background to come up with this you might have said in the beginning i didn't hear it properly well so um i am a service designer by discipline um service design is about uh you know designing solutions for human problems um uh, understanding what what the you know uh, human um, issues are, and then using uh, the technology, using the existing systems, uh, and combining all those things to find a solution which would be uh, helpful to the people. Okay, so you don't sleep much at night, then, right? <laughs> <laughs> You're busy all the time. So give us an example, like give us like soup to nuts. What does a person do? They pick up their phone. They're like, I have to go get my hair done or I have to go to, you know, Piccadilly Circle. What would they do? They pick up their phone and give us an example how it would work in a nutshell. Small example. Yeah. So we imagine like how Uber app works. Mm -hmm. um, and it would be that a VIP would search for a volunteer or um, I would not like disclose more, but like there could be other, other add-ons uh, which could help people to connect faster and maybe on the go. So um, let's say, you know, you want to go, um, yeah, shopping maybe. Okay. Uh, put it in a store which takes you, uh, which takes a sighted person, you know, 20 minutes to, to 30 minutes, 10 minutes walk, going there, picking up things, coming back, simple. But for a VIP, that's a challenge. Uh, and we want to change that. Say like a VIP says, you know, in, in, in one, one hour, I need to go and pick this up. And if someone's nearby says, yeah, I would like to do that as well. Walk with the person, take a break, uh, you know, get their things done as well and help the VIP do the shopping and drop them home and have a wonderful feeling when they leave um, the VIP. Well, I like the I like the play on words. VIP, visually impaired person, very important person. <laughs> that brings me to the name of your company, actually, the VIP world. Tell us a little bit. I was looking on your website. It's just amazing. It's got accessibility. You have a blog. It's got community. It's got a lot of stuff on there. Tell us some of the services that your um, VIP world does as well. I know Travel Hands is part of it, but also the rest of it. 
Yes. So we we created Travel Hands, the team behind VIP World, and we design accessible websites primarily. Um, the hypothesis is that you know uh, WCAG guidelines. You may be aware these are technical guidelines uh, to make the the content accessible uh, to the disabled community. Um, well, you know majority of the websites uh, may tick those boxes and be like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm compliant, but it's not usable. It's not user-friendly. Like our VIPs are not able to buy stuff from there and not, you know, not use it, you know, for the purpose. And we want to change that. And how can that happen? So we work with our VIP world community. Uh, we pay them for their time and we use a test with them along with following all the technical guidelines. And then we give the solution to the, uh, the website owners that makes um, the you know, disabled community use it, like buy it, buy stuff, interact with it, not being, being stuck you know, in, in, in some particular part of the website. So that's what VIP world is about. And our community at the moment, it's growing as, as every day. We are about 850 plus uh, community members. Um, and we are trying to, um, you know, and develop different solutions. We will definitely need to develop more solutions in the future. At the moment, uh, Travel Hands is, is our product. And on the side, we do design accessible uh, websites. Excellent, excellent. So there's only, there's, well, I'm saying only, but there's 800 and something people that use the service now. But you're saying on your website, there's 285 million people that are vision impaired in the world. And I'm sure that's going to grow. And I'm sure your company is gonna grow as well. So we really, really appreciate. You just seem like a very uh, intelligent, very innovative, very, um, you have a vision. You definitely have a vision for this company and it's amazing. And um, I, I wanted to share also the people that have used this and we'll go ahead and ask them. And then Alan, I know you have more questions. After Esme and Saeed give their experience to Travel Hands, please just, you can jump in and ask your questions to uh, Mr. Ja as well. But we know that Esme, hi Esme again. Hi, hi Anna. Hi, yeah. honey. What has been your experience with Travel Hands? Yeah, so, um, they did offer like uh, the first uh, time you use it, they actually offer you a complimentary service, which I think is great. That's uh, definitely something that you know, ticks boxes for me. Um, so for that, um, you get sort of three hours and I decided to go and visit my brother who's also visually impaired and he lives in a residential home. Now it's for a number of years because of the area that he lives in, it's very difficult for me to get to. Um, and I, I can't travel there, like the planning the journey and, and it makes me really nervous. And as I said before, I'm so new to the world where I'm traveling independently. When I heard about Travel Hands, the first thing that came to my mind was like, hold on, this is like Uber, but friendlier and cheaper. Um, and so I was so excited to try it because I, I tell you something, my bank note, my bank is not working with me anymore. We're not in agreement. Uber's just making me bankrupt. Um, but um, so, so we went, um, I called them. Um, I it was really cool to register. I actually registered through the phone. Um, and when I was fully registered, they just said to me, when you're ready to take that first trip, let us know. And you have to let them know uh, 24 to 48 hours ahead of time. Um, so we did that. And I was matched with a, a, a wonderful lady. I'm so... I, I, either her name was either Jennifer or Jenny, I can't remember, but she was amazing. So I think what, one thing that I noticed is that they tried to match you up with someone who is heading that way. And um, so she was trying, she said, um, she's going to go shopping in that area. So she would, um, she was, and I was like, you know what, um, on the way back, is it okay if I check out the shopping centers? Well, she said, yeah, that's fine. That's no problem. So we planned the journey. We had to use the tube um, and a bus. Um, and she was really great at it. I'm awful at planning journeys. Um, so she did that on an app. Um, she also helped me install an app on my phone um, to make it easier for me to locate um, buses and trains. Um, and so we went... Um, Unfortunately, there was a little hiccup, not because of the travel hands, but I couldn't see my brother for other reasons related to COVID. Um, but I managed to um, get to the department and then we ended up having a shopping trip. So it turned out pretty great. She was like, well, now, since you're not going to be able to see him face to face, you know, 
how about that shopping trip? Because we still had over an hour left. Um, so on the, on the way back, we had some retail therapy. Um, yes. and, and I actually bought the lipstick that I'm wearing now. <laughs> <laughs> which That's is great funny. which is great and she helped me choose um she, uh, which, which is great and um yeah and we had uh, lots in common like I um and I was just like oh my god you know what we you know I I really need to book travel hands so yeah um travel hands um definitely something I'm going to be using much more um than I have and I really want to venture into using public transport um and not just cabs um and I think that's why travel hands has been a godsend for people like me who are really nervous about stepping into the world uh, and what you were saying Ishan about London is you're right it's a very lonely place um and it's nice to connect with people in that way and I can sort of see a lot of people who are living in London you know volunteering for kind of things like that and I would like to know how uh, people can because I've actually when I've spoken about it to like my neighbors and friends, they've said, oh, you know what, well, that sounds really good. That's something I wouldn't mind doing. Um, so it'd be nice to know um, if, if you could elaborate on that as well on how uh, people can um, join as a volunteer. Great question. Oh, very simple. Um, go to our website, uh, travelhands.co.uk and sign up. And then the rest is all automated. Um, our team follows up, um, you know, and they we, we interact with them uh, on a video call. We explain the training process. We go 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 ahead with them, um, and we we do the enhanced DBS uh, test process with them. Uh, it's a very boring form, so we make sure it's it's um, you know um, <laughs> done through. Um, and um, actually, like very lately, there was an idea our team got was. Uh, inviting some of the VIPs uh, maybe for 10, 15 minutes on that training uh, uh, while, while training the, uh, you know, volunteers. Um, that's something uh, I, th I think would interest a lot of people. Um, and we're trying to do that as well. So. Um, oh, wow. Very good. Thank you. Well, sign us up. Sign up us, Alan and I. We want to be volunteer. No, we can't be volunteers because we're visually. We can't be volunteers, but I want to use the service. But I want to know: did your guys work with guide dogs? Well, not yet. We've been, we've been uh, you know, uh, we've been interacting with multiple charities. Guide dogs is one of them. Um, we have uh, spoken to. We have been marketing through RNIB, Royal National Institute for the Blind, uh, Thomas Pocklington Trust, Metro Blind um, um, Sports. British blind sports and so on and on. I've, I've bored everyone about travel hands. It's like travel hands, travel hands, use it. Come on, <laughs> let's go. Let's get going. Here, this that's would be wonderful. That's what you have to do. It's your passion. You're going to eat, drink, and sleep travel hands. And speaking of travel hands, Asid, are you out there? We're going to have you give your experience with travel hands as well. Is Asid there, uh, Renee? Said, uh, I think you have to unmute he's, yourself. He's there. Yeah, he just has to unmute. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Hasid. Oh, we understand you used uh, travel hands. Is that correct? Uh -oh. Sorry, I couldn't. I couldn't hear you guys. Sorry. Can you hear me now, sir? Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to get a quick um, testimonial from you on travel hands. You've used it. Did you like it? I've used it twice so far. And honestly, it's, it's the best thing to uh, come out in a long time for people who are visually impaired. And also, I've also said to Ishan, um, you know, I'd lo love to advertise and promote the, uh, the, 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 the organization because it's it, it's moving forward it's a very good thing for people who are visually impaired yes and i've got no um you know no uh <clears throat> no negative things to say about the company i so far used it twice uh, um i've been out with ishan as well and i've had a lovely uh, you know lovely conversation with himself and uh, a gentleman called james and it was really good and um I'm hoping that if we can support one another, we could actually make uh, 
travel hands international where we can go on holiday somewhere and travel hands can organize volunteers from, from a different country i'm sure i'm sure it's just going to evolve into something even better thank you asif for sharing that with us it sounded so uh, motivating for us we want to try it really bad and it was very sincere and from your heart. So we want to thank you for that. Um, sir, um, Ishan, do you have anything you'd like to add? Tell us your website. Um, give us a little closing information you want us to know about your company. Yes. So, um, well, um, the, the Travel Hands website is um, um, travelhands.co.uk. So um, even if you are based in the U.S., um, you can join our VIP World community. Um, our website is uh, vipworldservices.com. Um, however, if you if you're not very comfortable in using the websites, um, we have our you know uh, WhatsApp group. You can get in touch with us through Rene. Um, we do um, Zoom calls every Wednesday, twelve noon uh, British standard time where we laugh a lot definitely that's, that's the true. guarantee <laughs> that's true it's a lot of fun <laughs> yeah, and I'm laughing <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's it's organized uh, you know we have regular members and Rene is one of our regular uh, members there and uh, everyone's invited uh, we bring in guests we bring in um, you know we have brought um, singers dancers whenever but even if there, there are no entertainers there our team makes sure that it's fun um then we have a clubhouse calls on thursday uh, you know we have different channels to to get in touch we have a facebook group as well uh facebook page vip world services so different means um you know instagram as well um to connect with us and whichever tool whichever assistive tech tool you use um, and whichever way you want to connect, um, please do. We have different means and we make sure that, you know, we bring in the community together. We give uh, how much, uh, the idea is to bring the community together to interact, share knowledge, practice. And, you know, the most important thing is to have fun and say like, okay, fine. Like, you know, I'm a VIP, whatever. I'll have fun in my life. <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you. Alan, do you do want to have, Oh, I'm sorry. Do we have some time for some questions from the audience, Renee? Hello, Renee. Do we have time for some questions? Sorry, unmuted. Um, yes. Oh, no. no. We do. <laughs> I just yes. want to say, first of all, before we go to questions, I just want to give a proper thank you and goodbye to the Sean John. Thank you for being with us on the show. And we want you thank back you. again so we could hear about all the updates to Travel Hands and your VIP world. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, Alan, thank do, you. do we have questions? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure if we have questions or not. Renee? Um, I don't think so. Nobody's asked well. anything. <laughs> No, no. He do. He will. <laughs> I would really like to thank. Oh, by the way, Esme, you brought back memories of when I was young, living with my grandparents in Canada with that lamb dish. Oh wow! Uh, oh, anyway, I'm happy to hear I that, mean, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to thank everyone for joining us on the Christmas in London edition of the Cooking Without Looking TV show, and thank all of our supporters who've been there with us including attorney Benjamin J. Crump uh, of the law firm of Benjamin Crump, uh, uh, was it F uh, uh, law firm anyway. Uh, we very much appreciate your support. And uh, remember to go to our website, that's www.cookingwithoutlookingtv.wonderpress Dot Word, WordPress. 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 I apologize, Renee. That was it is dot wordpress.com for today. Uh, all of our recipes and a lot of other information there too. I also want you to enjoy more in our shows and podcasts. Please click on pick there. Yeah, my tongue is all tied up, Renee. Please click on the Vision World Foundation link at the top of our website. Also, this show is, uh, uh, and past shows, 
are available on our Cooking Without Looking YouTube channel. So please check out the Cooking Without Looking podcast anywhere you get your favorite podcasts. And if you want to sponsor a show, oh, we would love it. Please give us a call at 305-200-9104. And Annette? Oh, by the way, Merry Christmas to everybody. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy holidays. Uh, if I missed anything, happy Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy Thank you. Our home Christmas. We love you. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you all. Thank you.